Hey everybody, happy Friday. So tonight I'm out here in the garage working on the dyno car. Actually, I'm about to call it a night. I've been out here wiring for a little bit and uh, the wiring I thought was almost done, but uh, it's like a never ending chore. So I've got, the, uh, I've got the light switch, the dimmer switch, and just a few more things to go ahead and wire up. And then I think I'm done. I can focus on the, uh, the cooling, the engine, and getting this thing on the road. So why don't we take a second and I'll walk you through what I did with the AEM wiring, where I'm at, and uh, just a brief status update. All right, so here it is, right? The OM617, as you can see, I do have the uh, inlet temperature for the intake manifold. I have boost pressure in the intake and you won't be able to see it much, but I do have EGTs that uh, feed into that gray connector and actually go inside to my CAN bus controller. Now, if we go around to the other side here, we'll see that I do have water temperature. And now if this was a long project, meaning I'm gonna run this car on the street for a long time, I would probably do that different. It's hard to tell from the camera angle, but there is play between that connector and the pump. Uh, the angle is misleading, but it is pretty close. Down below, you won't be able to see it, but I do have a um, oil pressure sensor, and of course, later will be will come a RPM sensor. So I need to figure out the AX15 wiring for that, and just haven't done it yet. Okay, so let's uh, take a look inside the car. All right, so here's the chaos inside the car, but it is an organized chaos, so don't stress about it. Uh, I'm certainly not. It's all, believe it or not, um, very easy to, to figure out. Uh, all this was wrapped up in my power braid loom. It was a single loom running across the car. There you can see my AEM CAN22 sensor module. So that will take all of the sensors on the car and it will package it up in a CAN message and it will send it over to my AEM display, which has a GPS module and data logger. So we will be able to take external images, for example, a dynograph, and overlay the car's performance on that dynograph. So this is going to be pretty awesome. And by the end of the weekend, I hope to have all of my wiring wrapped up uh, and loomed under the, uh, the dash mount here. So why don't we go ahead and walk over and talk about the dash mount. All right, so there it is, the AEM CD7 carbon display with data logger and GPS. So sitting in the driver's seat, you can see I can reach all the switches. Again, those, those two empty switches will become meth and nitrous activation. Through the steering wheel, you can see the full CD7 display. I'm very excited about this. Um, it should afford a wealth of information uh, as we go ahead and dyno these engines. So the mount, what is the mount? Well, the mount is literally four pieces of carbon fabric with a core material in between. Believe it or not, four pieces of carbon with that core material, it's extremely strong. So it's only held in here with two bolts, but if you look at this, yes, I can move it, but when you consider uh, the rigidity of that board with what is in this material uh, and the fact it's only affixed in two places, um, I'm very excited about it, really. Uh, it's turned out very well. Uh, the mount, I think I showed in other videos online. I don't want this to be a long video, but I used a fiberglass veil on it. Uh, per the suggestion of my carbon supplier, I don't like it. It left some white spots in the final product. Um, little blemishes, I think, whereas a carbon veil would have made it a nice glossy finish. Uh, for the back on the switches, I do actually have plugs. Um, I'm going to test one of those out and if it fits these switches because they're from two different manufacturers, I'm going to go ahead and eventually I'll replace all of this with actual plugs and solder the wires. So that's a longer term project. But as you can see, I mean the carbon, it, it is actually very strong and very good. So this is really it, right? Friday night out here, calling it a night. All I have left inside the dimmer switch, the light switch, and then it's on to getting this junker to run. This engine was found in a dried up mud hole in Tucson, Arizona in a junkyard. The junkyard manager said it had been sitting there for three years. So if I can get this running, I will be happy. On the diesel engine, really, it is about compression, it is about fuel, and really, that is about it. If it has air, that fuel will burn and it will combust. 
So we'll see if we can get this going. My only concern is there is actually no compression. But um, that's it, man. Uh, I do have the carbon pieces made for this and the inside. I wish you guys a great Friday night. And thank you for watching. Thanks for all the support. Ben's Force has grown. I can't believe it. We are on a great trajectory. And uh, great things are to come, not only for the diesel market, but also for the gas market. And uh, I hope to get back to making videos like I did on the 123 as soon as I get my equip equipment in line. So thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And have a great weekend.